Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel, The Millennial Physicist. Guys, in this channel, I upload the lecture videos regarding higher physics of courses like bachelor's and master's in physics and for competitive exams as well. Now, in today's video, I am going to start the topic of pre-acceleration and also going to tell about where does it come from. Guys, this is the important topic of electrodynamics. Now, let us start the video. The concept of pre-acceleration comes from the Abraham Lorentz equation. Actually, the difficulties with Abraham Lorentz equation are like its differential form contains unphysical behavior due to higher order terms in time. So, we want an equivalent equation of motion which is of correct order and exhibits the successive approximations. Abraham Lorentz equation is converted into an equivalent equation of motion so that the new equation should have solution which are continuous for the neutral particle and the limit are such that the charge particle will tend to zero. So smaller the particle's charge, smaller will be its self field and radiative effect will also go in smaller. Later when we derive the new equation which is equivalent to the Abraham Lorentz equation then that equation is considered as integral differential equation. Now to derive that equivalent equation of motion which we later called integral differential equation we have to take Abraham Lorentz equation. So Abraham Lorentz equation of motion is f external equal m v dot minus tau v double dot here m is the mass of particle and v dot is the rate of change of velocity that is according by newton's law and tau is the characteristic time which is equal to 2 by 3 e square over m is mc cube v dot v dot is the second derivative of velocity thus it is second order uh, it is second order in time rather than first order this arises uh, rather than first order so this arises difficulty in runway solutions to avoid this difficulty another equation is proposed and that is called integral differential equation of motion so if the external force f e x t is given as the function of time then the above equation can be integrated once with respect to time to place the equation in the correct order so v dot t equal e to the power t over tau dot ut this is equation 2 now ut equal v dot t e to the power minus t over tau now differentiating it with respect to time we get here by product rule ut equal minus 1 over tau e to the power minus t over tau v dot t plus e to the power minus t over tau v double dot t taking e to the power minus t over tau as common we get ut equal minus 1 over t e to the power minus t over tau v dot minus tau v double dot now multiplying m in both sides then equation becomes m ut equal minus 1 over tau e to the power t over tau dot m v dot minus t v double dot here m v dot minus tau v double dot this expression is equal to f external from equation 1 so therefore integrating with the given limits equation becomes m u t equal minus 1 over tau integration limit t to c e to the power minus t over tau f t dash d t dash now multiplying equation 2 by m and put for m u t we get m v dot t 
e to the power t m u t and m v dot equal e to the power t over tau upon tau integral limit t to c e to the power minus t over tau f t dash d t dash this is our equation 3 where the negative sign has been absorbed by making the lower limit of integral indefinite c is the constant of integration this equation 3 is called integral differential equation of motion so it differs from the conventional dynamic equation of motion in that acceleration of the particle at any time depends on the not on the instantaneous value of the force acting but on the weighed time average of force i repeat it differs from the conventional dynamical equation of motion in uh, conventional dynamical equation of motion in that the acceleration of particle at any time depends not on the instantaneous value but on the void time average of force next point the factor e to the power t dash minus t over tau in the equation suggest that only the small time interval of order tau is involved since tau is directly proportional to e square the time interval become vanishingly small as e square tend to zero it implies that the equation is for unchanged particles and therefore equation 3 should simply be newton's equation of motion which is mv dot equal ft here f is the function of t let us see how it is arrived at let us put s equal t dash minus t over tau and t dash equal t plus s tau so that dt dash equal t ds with lower limit t tends to zero also as tau tends to zero s tends to infinity therefore putting the limit as zero to infinity in terms of the variable s equation 3 becomes mv dot t equal 1 over t integral limit infinity to zero e to the power minus s f t plus tau s dot tau ds so tau will cancel out and equation becomes mv dot t equal integral 0 to infinity e to the power minus s f t plus s tau ds this is our equation 4 if the force is slowly varying in time f can be expanded in taylor series around s equals 0 giving f of t plus s tau equal sigma n equals 0 to infinity tau s whole power n upon n factorial dot d n f t over d t n this is our equation 5 so that equation 4 becomes m v dot t equal sigma n 0 to infinity tau to the power n d n f t d t n this is our equation 6 if we want a term for a neutral particle such that e tends to 0 for tau is also tending to 0 then it can be only possible for n equal to 0 equation 6 becomes mv dot t equal ft which is 
Newton's equation of motion. There is one thing peculiar about integral differential equations that is it is seen from equation 4 that the acceleration of the particle at time t depends on the force which will act at times later than t. It means that the effect is present before the cause which is not possible. This is the violation of the concept of casualty because Here, equation of motion predicts pre-acceleration before the force is actually applied. So, in this three graphs below, first graph shows the pre-acceleration pre and that pre-acceleration curve can be drawn as these three lines. And other two graphs are simply a motion graphs. So, this is the end of our video in which pre-acceleration can easily define guys please don't forget to like and subscribe my video if you like it thank you so much for today